My name's Dennis Clark. I worked on the cars at Bristol, starting my apprenticeship in 1949, and done a complete five-year apprenticeship working with Sid Lovesey. Right. And you were on the electrical side, I understand. On the electrical side, correctly. Right. What were you, what were you actually doing as an electrician? We were putting complete wiring in of the Bristol cars, all the different models, from start to finish. Right. So which models did you work on in those years? I worked on the first one, on the last couple of the 400s. Yes. The 401s, 402s and the 403s. Right. And I think they were bringing out the 404 when I left. Around about the same, they, yeah. about the same time, that's right. Yeah. And uh, I, I think you, saw, you worked on the Le Mans cars as well. Yes, I worked on the two, uh, I can't remember, it was two or three in yes. the 24-hour Le Mans. Can you but, tell... Yes. Well, wiring them up over in uh, what well, used to be the Shields Laundry, opposite the BAC. Right. Was there anything special about the wiring for the racing cars? Well, yeah, uh, it's, uh, a lot of other stuff. Uh, normal cars got they didn't have because of the weight; they didn't want yes. to carry it. But they also uh, had two set circuits, complete circuits on it. Right. Uh, so that if there were any trouble, the driver just flick a switch and go over to the new circuit and carry on right. without stopping. <laughs> so it had a fail-safe circuit, yeah. like, a, like an aeroplane, really? Well, it would be, yes. Who, who designed that? That was Sid again, Sid Lovesey. Uh, yes, so, so Sid, Sid designed all the... Yeah, he, he was a clever man. Right. <laughs> it was a pleasure to work under him. Yes, yes. A real pleasure, because he really taught me a, a lot. Right. So your, your apprenticeship was, ele with co was electrics right the way through? Right through, on the Bristol cars. Yes, and then, then you left, when you left, uh, when you finished your apprenticeship, you went into the forces? Yeah. So you were called up? I called up, yeah, National Service, two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I trained then as a motor mechanic in there, so I know both sides of the car. <laughs> right, right. Any tips for people tackling restoration of these cars right now, 60 years on? Well, uh, uh, to get the cable to harness from the front to the rear end and the tank and that, uh, a tube, a metal yeah. tube, all along the in chassis, yes. which we had to thread it through. But we were lucky because we had a, a metal draw wire which was put in, uh, in place for us, ready to hook it on when the harness was in place. Uh, fitting there, being fitted. So it, somebody feeding it at the front, well, I was at the back easing it through right. and, and then forking it out into different junctions. So those of us who've tackled this know that that tube is quite a challenge because it's yeah. curved at the end. Yeah. It's got to go around a sharp curve. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, the, the, draw, the draw wire was the answer to that. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, when I first seen it, I thought that was a brilliant idea because it stopped the cable from rotting. Yes. Or the street muck. Yes, yes. I thought it was a brilliant job. I thought you'd never replace that. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Um, and how about dashboard wiring in, in, in a 400? How, any techniques for tackling that? Well, we, uh, we used to have to be able to sit in, on the in the front, um, myself and a new chap that came to work for us, by the name of Bill Bryant. Right. And which uh, Sid Hater, that Sid Lovesey uh, christened him Blusher, because he goes completely red. <laughs> right. Nickname. He'd sit one side, I'd sit the other side on boxes with the uh, dashboard on our laps. Right. And artists come over and we can wear it all up and then just fold it back up and bolt it in. So you'd and Any chances, disconnect the um, speedo drives in that and then you can unbolt it and lay it back onto your lap. Right, right. And, and do any work. <laughs> so anybody that's looked under a 400 dash will have found a, a big coil of oh, a redundant cable, redundant yeah, cable yeah. And, and that is why. Uh, allowing it to yes. f for ease of use. So we don't need to crick our necks leaning under the dashboard. No, and upside down. your backs and, no, no, and just fork your hands up underneath. <laughs> sit, sit there with it in your lap. Yes, beautiful. And put it back, <laughs> put it back into place. Yeah. So Even that, for any of the instruments, it had to be changed. Easy way of doing it. Yeah, yeah. So that was a bit of Sid's, that was a bit of Sid's design. Sid's bright ideas. Sid's bright idea, he's, yes. He's a clever man. Yes. Do you think that came from aircraft background, that, take, that sort of, that approach to it, or...? Um, I, I don't know. I think he, he's idea. always been on cars all his life. I'm not sure. But yes. 
Yes. I understood, you know, from him and the way he taught. He's always worked on cars. Yes. Um, so who else do you remember? Do who else do you recall in the works with you? Your work, your workmates. Well, there was uh, Harry Hawkins. He was an electrician. Always fitted all radios in all the cars. Okay. He, that was his main job, fitting all the radios. Yes. Yes. And, and as I said, there was this Bill Brown as blusher, as he was known, and myself doing all the main wiring. Right. And Sid controlling everything. <laughs> um, did custom the fitters? Well, there was uh, there's quite a few fitters round on the uh, engine side or the mechanical side. Some of them uh, I I can't remember their names, but uh, they also had the uh, a cleaner, which oh, yes. we made uh, or they made him up in a, a flying outfit right. to go and test drive the cars with the uh, test drivers sitting right. next to him with a clipboard. Right. And he looked right, Charlie, with the honest gear on. He thought it was, he was top dog then when he'd done that. And also, they used to take the mickey out of him and paint his shoes when he was stood by the car. Somebody underneath on the car with white paint to paint his shoes. And when he was ill, taking ill, he lived in one of the houses in the Fairly, the uh, houses just inside the BAC gates. Oh, yes. I can't remember the name of the driveway. Uh, there was all the house, a row of houses owned by the BAC. Right, right, inside the and works. And he, he lived there. And when he was ill, they sent a card uh, to him. Uh, all the workers signed it. Yes. And, and with a word saying on there, for Christ's sake, don't die. You can't get a coffin down those stairs. <laughs> I thought, I teach said that as a man is ill. <laughs> that, was very, that was very encouraging, very yes. encouraging. So, um, and did you did you go to the did you go to, what about the staff canteen? Did you go to the canteen for lunch or um, no? How, how uh, was that looked after? Well, I always took sandwiches for like uh, Harry Hawkins, uh, Harry Hawkins did, yeah. and Sid Hater and that. We always sat there, and then soon we had our sandwich and we played darts for the rest of uh, half hour before oh, starting working. Right. What did Sid say about that? Well, Sid was uh, he was a leader. Oh right. Oh, he was a dart. He could throw uh, six-inch nails and stick them in the board. Right. <laughs> he was clever. <laughs> so, so he's a man of many parts. He is. Uh, I've heard tell he, he might have been something of a ladies' man in those days. Well, I, I heard that he was uh, fond of ladies, but right. uh, if it was true, I wouldn't like to say. So we haven't got any definite evidence no, one way or another no on that. No, no. no. Yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, though. <laughs> Okay, so um, what other cars do you remember working on? That's the that's the there's, you say quite a bit about the four hundred, the four hundred one, mm -hmm. the four hundred two, and the four hundred threes. So the, plus the Le Mans cars. So the uh, the four hundred one, four hundred threes, because they had, I imagine the wiring loom was virtually the same for those. Yeah. Um, anything particular about those that you recall, uh, as via via the wiring? They well, I, I found to get the cables from the front to the back was easier on those than it was on the 400. Yes. Uh, I don't know if the tube was bigger or what, but mm, it was mm. quite simple to do it. Yes. And yes. I think some of them were coming inside the car under the metal work in between the car and the, and the uh, flooring. Yes, yes. It was quite easy in a way. And you also would have worked on uh, what, a small number of 402s. Yeah. Um, do you remember anything about anything about the 402? Any not, any, not really. Any particular customers? Well, I don't know what, what, which car it was, but I know that it's um, Gene Simmons. Oh, yes. And uh, Stuart Granger, I believe. Stuart, uh, Stuart Granger. Two cars. Yes. Come up and buy cars. And, uh, well, when they sat in them, yeah. there was breast buttons out in the doors, and they couldn't get out. Right. They had to get a fitters coming out in the doors to get them out. Right, right. So that, that was a bit embarrassing, picking up their new cars. Yeah. Do you remember any other staff, uh, any other personalities or characters? Well, uh, the, the uh, manager of the workshop. Oh, yes. He, to me, he was a crazy man. Right. And he always on how strong he was, and that he said he could lifted up the all the weight of the Bristol car. Right. So they put one up on the ramp. Yeah. He climbed underneath and almost on four four 
in the position yeah. of four legs sort of thing, and they lowered the ramp onto him. Right. And he did take a bit. Of, it, it, it did take a wait for a, a few seconds. Right. But uh, a few days later, he had a heart attack. <laughs> and I don't doubt it. Right. But eventually, he got over it. He right. was he was a lucky man. He, he was crazy, but a lucky man. Very lucky. Very lucky. I, I can't see anybody with any sense taking the weight of a car on the car oh. back, especially a bristle because they were a big built car. Yes. 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 Um, what was it like working on the factory site? Was there, um, what was the sort of atmosphere like with the, with the workforce? Because it was a big site. I mean, thousands of workers, obviously, in British, Air, British Aircraft Company and the other, the other factories there. Yeah, uh, but uh, it was lovely working with the, uh, all the workforce, the fitters, the, um, I forget what they call them, they made up all the seats. Oh, yes, trimmers, I suppose. Trimmers, that's yes. right and doing the roof lining on the cars and everybody, they were like one big happy family. Yes. It, yes. it was nice to be with it. Yes, yes. I wonder if that's why people have stayed there so long. Yeah, I, I wouldn't doubt that. I, I don't understand. Uh, now, when I went in the forces, yes. and when you come out, they had to give you your job back. Oh, and yes. I can't understand why I didn't go back to Bristol Cars, yes. why they put me on aircraft or in maintenance of the factory. <laughs> Yes. That beat me. I don't, I don't know why. Yes, yes, yes. On the, the man's cars, when they come coming towards the end of the race, mm. our Bristol cars were getting in the order of their number. Oh, like yes. one, two, and three, or mm. whatever their numbers were. And when they were trying to shift around doing it, they nearly caused the Jaguars, the winners of the race, right. to crash because they have taken all the room up. <laughs> right. And of course, and of course Jaguars but, were much faster cars. Yeah. And they were and they, trying, to, trying to overtake yeah. and trying to pass. Course, so once they got into in the correct order they wanted to get into, Jaguars, well, sure, yeah, sure, they were gone. <laughs> yes, yes. But you didn't get to go to... You didn't no, get to go I, to... I was hoping I'd go over there to uh, look after them, sort of electrical wise, but no luck. <laughs> I suppose quite a few... I suppose quite a few um, people did go. Uh, yeah, because uh, it was a separate uh, workforce so, uh, doing the Reliant, uh, Le Mans cars. Yes. It wasn't the people it was, I was working with in the main shop. Yeah, it was like a special project, <laughs> yeah. was it? Uh, well, well, I don't know where they came from. Uh, right. But <laughs> the only time I seen them was over there building these cars. Mm, mm. Because it was totally different. Did you um, did you see Sir George White, for example? George White, yeah, I, I didn't uh, get to know him and all that. But what, what amazed me was, I got a, a Princess of the Year award for you, George White. You he did. Didn't give me it, but the, it came from him. Electrical Princess of the Year, and I was the only electrical princess there. <laughs> So it was you were first. You were first. <laughs> the only apprentice, and I won the award. <laughs> you were the first out of one, then. Because yeah. <laughs> it amazed me when I, get, I read it uh, about it. And I thought, well, I'm the only one. <laughs> well, it would have been worse if they hadn't given it to you, wouldn't it? <laughs> well, oh, I wouldn't have known anything about it. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to have to find time to go up and have a chat with Sid. I think I'd you love are. To go and see him. I think you are. He's still up there. Yeah, it was is it cent Century the Road? Um, it's, I think it's Britannia Road, isn't it? Is it's, that Britannia? I, I, I can, oh. I'll, I'll ring you with the address. Yeah. And um, he's there every day. Because I know if I go up the dual carriageway, yes. I can get into the industrial estate that way. That's, you can, you can. Um, and it's, there's a map, there's a map anyway, and it's marked. I think it's Britannia Drive. Yeah. But I'll, 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 I'll let you know. Yeah. He still opens the gates at half past six every morning. Oh, I won't be there then. No, I wouldn't. No, me, nor me neither. And I presented him with a, um, a bit of Bristol blue glass last week. Yeah. On, Lovely. On his 90th birthday. Yeah. It was. And uh, the factory was busy and full and there was lots going on there. A lot, a lot of restoration yeah. work now. And um, said, said please with the glass. The present? Or I, was he surprised? I, he was surprised. He didn't want any celebration. He didn't want anybody to know about it. He said if they made a fuss, he wasn't going to turn up. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we had a bit of cake and uh, everybody, yeah. everybody applauded and the workforce were all there and it was a, it was a great occasion. I would have loved the, the chappie I'd seen it, uh, on our Thornbury Carnival. 
they were saying, let me know, so I sort of popped up there. Right. It was happening on the actual day. I'd oh. love to have done that. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Well, he, he didn't want any publicity. Well, no. Um, That's when they enjoy it better. Yes, yes. yes. Although everybody with him. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, well, look, thank you very much indeed. That's been absolutely great. Pleasure. Thank Important you. to you. Thank Bristol you, cars, my memories. Bristol I cars. I loved yeah. working on them. <laughs> oh, that's great. <laughs>